Hey guys, it's Strutter here and today is December the 29th, 2013 and this is going to be a wrap up and summary of the Drutter Divergence which is a phenomenon I noticed about 10 months ago in the silver market. I'm excited about the video especially because of some stuff that I noticed today that I'm going to talk about toward the end of the video and just to note this video will be embeddable so you can put it on Facebook or on blogs or whatever you like. First I'm going to show you a clip taken from my initial video on this topic where I experimented by comparing silver's price and demand and came up with some interesting observations since the start of the bull market in 2000. This is the US Mint's government website. Silver Eagles that were sold in January of this year, 7.5 million, a new record, and the Eagles sold in February of this year, 3.3 million also a new record for February and a lot of people are um, dismissing these numbers and saying it doesn't mean anything well let's have a look at um, I've done some analysis here this is the number of silver eagles sold in January's and February's over the past uh, 13 years so starting in 2000 going all the way to 2012 does anyone recognize this chart yeah this is the silver chart here. I've drawn it in here in green so it looks the same, but this is the silver chart over the same time frame from 2000 to 2012. Yeah, I, I think that's fairly obvious. So the sales have roughly been following the price. Now, if we extrapolate this out one more year, what is the January-February total for 2013? That's already known. We can put that in here and the answer is 10.9 million. So we have had a record year for February's and or for January's and February's so far um, and if you look at this this doesn't necessarily reflect that. So we have followed the same pattern through to 2012 but the 2013 numbers are already showing that we are breaking free from the pattern of just following this um, price. The price has come down. In fact, the price is exactly where it was this time last year. But sales of bullion is remarkably higher. So this is something that we'll have to keep on following. Breaking free from that pattern of just following the price. We've had a record January and February and uh, that puts us on pace for a record year people are stacking up big time on silver bullion. So that's it for me guys. That initial video and the follow-up I did generated some buzz around YouTube and on some blogs and stuff on the internet and brother John F gave the phenomenon a name and peer-reviewed it. Endless Mountain also peer-reviewed it and did some of his own analysis and then Mike Maloney spoke about it in some presentations as well. There's a guy on the internet that goes by the name of Dredder that noticed this divergence happening. I updated the divergence graph as more data came in through the middle of the year and refined my graphics and methods slightly, although they're still pretty Mickey Mouse. I use paint, for example, and haven't done a full update in quite a while, several months, really. So with the year now completed, we can do a final divergence graph for 2013, and then I have something that I think is pretty cool to show you. Here now is the final graph for silver bullion demand and it's represented by silver eagle demand because silver eagles are the most popular most well-known silver bullion product in the world and this chart now has the final 2013 data because no more silver eagles will be sold this year as well of course as the finalized data for the previous 13 years going back to 2000 which is when most people believe the silver bull market really began I'm just gonna re-aim the camera a little bit here if you haven't seen this graph before it's measured in millions of ounces. Demand was very stable and flat and silver really wasn't known or really talked about all that much even in financial circles since 2000 all the way through 2007 at which point demand started to move upward and continued moving up every year until 2011 which is when the price of silver spiked and peaked at $50 an ounce and in 2012 demand pulled back along with the spot price of silver and it wasn't until 2013 that we took out those old 2011 highs in terms of demand for silver but as you're well aware the price of silver did not take out that old $50 top in fact we've plummeted from that $50 top down to $20 at the time of this recording 
let's now bring in an actual silver chart from the exact same time period so we can compare the price and demand and roughly there we go as you can see price and demand for silver almost always follow fairly closely along with each other when it's low it's low when it's high it's high and we did have a peak here in 2011 in both price and demand and then a pullback in both and then in 2013 things changed completely and we're seeing a drop in price in fact a plummeting of price and an exponential increase in the demand for silver in fact silver demand has been higher this year than it ever has been in history so there you have it that's silver's price versus demand from 2000 through 2013 completed obviously this story doesn't end here this is something we're gonna have to keep on following in 2014 in fact it's one of the things I'm gonna be following most closely one thing that's never been sufficiently explained by anyone is why this is happening and I am going to come back to that, but first I'm going to show you a clip from a video I did about a month ago and an interesting observation I made at that time, which I think we can use to help explain what's going on here with this divergence. The orange here is the stock market over the past five years. The bottom here on the left, indicated by that green arrow there, is the bottom of the stock market. And it's when they did QE1. Of course that pushed the stock market up but it began to get a little bit soft here again, and they did QE2 to push it up again. When the stock market really began to come back down again, they needed a lot of stimulus, so they invented something called QE3, or QE3 to infinity, which means they're gonna do the same thing they did here with QE1 and QE2, but they're just gonna do it every month instead of just one time. So every month from here on, they were printing money, buying mortgage-backed securities. Boom, the stock market made a new high, but, it started to peter off again here, and they needed to do something called QE3 to infinity acceleration, which means we're just going to print that much money, eh, but double it every month. We'll do it even more every month, okay? So here we go, and it ramped up the stock market, and now the stock market is just happily moving ahead. We can put that silver chart from the same time period overlapping on top right about there and what that shows is that silver responded to the same as the stock market here for QE1 and QE2 by going higher and higher and higher but then at QE3 to infinity it made a top instead of a bottom and hasn't seen that price since and then when silver looked like it was going to start to recover here and start to move higher again they hit it with QE3 to infinity acceleration which just knocked it back further down so silver responded opposite to the stock market once QE3 began. QE1 and QE2, exactly the same, moving up, making new highs. QE3 and QE3 acceleration only served to knock silver down. Today I thought, why not bring the gold chart in? So here's the gold chart over that exact same time period, and yeah, you can see exactly what happened. Line them up exactly. So it looks like the question is, why did QE1 and QE2 push gold and silver up as expected, along with the stock market, but QE3 had some kind of magical effect that caused silver and gold to come down and never reach that high again, twice. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna flip the second half of this chart upside down, right there where they did QE3. So rotate, flip vertical, and line it up like that. There, that's I think the proper gold chart. And why not silver as well? Right there is where they did QE3 to infinity, so we'll flip the chart at that point. And there we go. Line it up. There we go. That's the proper silver chart. And we'll put it on the chart right there. Line it up the same on the left as before. There we go. That looks better. Gold 2. Line it up on the left. Yep. There we go. And there you have it. This is a five-year chart of the U.S. stock market in orange, gold in red, and silver in blue. This also makes a lot more sense now because QE3 pushes gold and silver up as it should, so does QE3 accelerating as it should. No more magic tricks by the Fed. As I noted in that video when I was working with the Dow chart and the silver and gold charts, the Dow was pushed up by QE1, 2, 3, and 4, but gold and silver were only pushed up by QE1 and 2, and then since QE3, which is that little spike there just after the main peak at 50, silver and gold have both been pushed down by further quantitative easing, which absolutely does not make any sense, and really only makes sense if you flip the chart from that point on. 
So I thought, wouldn't it be interesting to try taking away the real chart and putting in that other chart, which makes a lot more sense given the stock market and quantitative easing. And what it looks like is something like this. Granted, this isn't proof that the gold and silver markets have been completely fake since the onset of QE3, but it's the best explanation I've seen for why precious metals have been moving down since that time instead of up as the stock market and everything else has been doing. Two completely different approaches that both independently support the same conclusion. This is very strong evidence that something that I've been saying for a long time is true, and that is that the gold and silver markets are not responding to supply and demand, or any other free market forces for that matter. They are almost entirely completely fake and completely controlled. Who knows what the proper price of silver bullion really is? Is it $20 per ounce? No. I don't think we are going to find out what it really should be now, maybe not even in 2014. It may take quite some time for this to resolve, but I've said it before and I'll say it again, this can't go on forever. And I know that we are on to something here, and this is something I'm going to be following very, very closely in 2014, and beyond if necessary. Talk to you guys soon.